Hi everyone! Welcome back to another tutorial in the Summer Royalty um, brace or Summer Royalty set. So, so far we have our bracelet made, our earrings made. Next week's going to be the fun, fun, um, the um, necklace. And here is the ring. Is this not stunning? So this is the matching ring to the um, bracelet and earrings. Now, this one here I did with, because I did it with my leftover um, Rivoli's, I still need to keep two of each color. And the one that's a single color all by itself, and the one I have is a single color because I used two of them in the earrings. So you're going to have one leftover, whatever color you make your earrings. And I'm making it out of the pink, and I also have a green left over. So the mint green, I'm doing the tutorial in this. So what you need to do is get your component made. And you really don't need me to show you how to make this component again. It's just going to get boring. Right? <laughs> so let me come up. <coughs> oh, sorry. Now you're going to make your component and you're going to end in your three, three beads on the side here. Now what I did on the ring here is I just added a little base here so I had something to work with on uh, the ring. Okay, so what I did here is I picked up two. Before you tie off your thread you need to do this first, okay. You need to pick up two 11 O's. Where's my thread coming out? Um, one of your... So, make sure you pay attention to which side you... Oh, geez. Which side you're coming out of. So, you're going to pick your gem duo up on the side that you're... On the right side. So, because I'm coming out on this side of the three beads here at the bottom. So you need to pick up your gem duo. You need to pick up five seed beads. Seed beads. Okay. Now you're going to just drop all those down and you're going to go back through the second hole of your gem duo like that. Okay. Now this is not going to be uh, super tight because you, you can reinforce it once you get the thread on it, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go right through here, the three beads again, all right? Like this. So you have a base to work with your shank. And make sure your gem duel is up. Oops, shoot. I forgot to put two beads on. Oopsies. you got to put two beads on. Pick up two more and then go through the three on the base of your ring, like so. Okay, so you have this. Now, what you're going to do is you need the three beads out of the five. So, what I have... Uh, one sec. Okay, I forgot it in the thing, so I had to get it. What I'll be using is 0.5 millimeter stretch magic. This is really, really good cord. It's very strong and it's got 10 meters or 32 feet on it. So this is for sale in my shop. There'll be a link below in the video when I get this online. I just got these in today. So uh, this is what I'm using. So let me cut a piece of cord which is right there. You don't need a big long one. Now you had put five beads on here, but you want to go through the three middle beads attaching your stretch cord. So, all you have to do is put your stretch cord through all three beads. Maybe. I'm only using six pound fire line, so... I don't think you want to use anything much thicker than that. Even four pound might be okay, but then your your ring might be flimsy. So it's 
you know, it's just a little challenge to get them in your beads, but it'll go. Okay, so there. We've got our stretch cord on. I'm kind of make it even. Now, you can take your needle. Don't, don't take your needle off. Just leave your stretch cord on. Don't pull any of that off. And you're going to run your needle all the way through this because it is a shank. It is part of the ring and you want to tighten all of you want to reinforce it for sure. So pull that nice and tight. Go through the three beads that the stretch magic's on. And if you're having trouble getting through that, I would try a size 12 beading needle. Because I am going to go through it a third time before I go move my needle to the other side of the ring. So I'm just going through, pulling everything nice and tight. My stretch cord is there permanently through here. I just thought the shank was beautiful with these um, gem duos. So that's why I did it. So I'm going to go through these. You might have problems getting through a third time. The um, oh, missed the bead. Oh no. My needle's going through no problem a third time. Oops, I snagged my, oh, I snagged it over top of it. Okay, so that's what you want to be careful you don't do. Okay, there we go, fixed. Whoa, pulling the wrong cord. That's all I need to do is pull that out and I'll never get it back in. Okay, and now you're just going to go back through your, base here and now you are definitely going to work your way all the way around to the other side right across so that means going through the gem duel on this base here goodness I haven't cut that tail off yet I can't believe I haven't be careful you don't pull your <laughs> stretch magic out of that because if you do, you're definitely not going to get it back in. That is why you need to put it on first. And then we'll just work your way around now. That's all I'm doing. It's working my way around. Till I'm coming out the other side, which I'm almost there. It's just a little bit challenging getting through. the gem duels. Okay, now you want to be exiting here and I'm just going to drop the knee. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Goodness. I want to make sure I stay in frame because I feel like I'm getting out of frame again. I need to get in the gem duo. Got it. Like so. And I'm just going to leave my needle down now. Make sure it doesn't fall off. So, okay. Well, actually, you're, you have to put your beads on. So let's put, uh, well, I'm going to put two seed beads coming out the far end. So you got to go in the far end of the gem duel, the left side. Pick up five. Go back down the other hole of the gem duo because this is just the base of your shank and pick up two more gem duos or gem duos, two more 11 O's and go right back through those three beats. Okay, and that's all you're going to do for now. Okay, now in my base, I used nine um, mat tubos, but that this ring is super big, so I'm only going to use this eight this time. Okay. Not going to use nine because I have big fat fingers as you can see <laughs> and I'm only wanting to use um, eight. So let me try to get this nice and even. So you're going to use however many gem duos you're going to need 
for the length of your finger, so the length you need. But I'm also using True 2mm, which is linked in the video below. Uh, we sold out of everything. We got everything back in today. Uh, it's all back up on the site. I just have to put the stretch magic on. I haven't done that yet, but it will be there. Um, you're, I'm using True 2mm in the uh, Crystal Labrador Full to match the Gem Duos. So what I did on this ring is I picked up a one on each side of the um, one on each side. I picked up a fire polish, a two millimeter, very carefully. Okay. I picked up a gem duo, and because this is, we've got to make sure you have these upright. So flip your ring upright. So you don't get confused which side you're coming out of. All right, so I have, here's my ring. I'm coming out on this side. So that means I'm going to pick my gem duo up on the same way I picked it up for the, the, um, the, the shank. So you're going to pick up true two millimeter, a gem duo, and I'm just doing all of this on one cord first, on one half of the cord, and get your needle out of the way, Rubes, because you're bound to screw this up. As you guys know me, I'm famous for screwing up, making mistakes. All right, so let's go underneath. Okay, there we go. Get out of my way. So let's pick up a two millimeter HM Duo, picking it up on the right side here. Gem Duo, sorry about the paint on my hands, the dye. So that's uh, one, two, three. And like I said, I'm only gonna pick up eight this time because nine was too many. Just make sure you pick them all up the same way. Okay. So we have one. So we know this is the top of it. One, two, three, four. And five. And a fire polish. These true two millimeters are super sparkly, guys. And six. Okay, fire polish. And a seven. So it's kind of nice if you wanted to just for all your leftover single uh, Rivoli's. It would be kind of cute to make a, a ring for each color that you have left that you can just interchange, you know, with your clothing maybe if you're wearing blue or pink or turquoise or green. Whatever you have left, you can use. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven. And I need one more from my package. Whoopsies. My box Montes. Thought I had eight. I probably dropped one because I'm good for that too. I'm really good at that. All right, so let's get our last one picked up here. Okay, and now pick it up through that hole. Now you're just going to set. Whoops. Sit this side down. Okay, make sure your beads don't fall off of it. And then you're going to pick up your other side and try to untangle it. And then you're going to put a fire polish in between each one of your gem duos that you've got here. So you've got to be very careful. You don't dump these off. So tiny these fat fingers. Okay. 
Make sure they're all upright, guys. Don't just go down there and pick your ring band could end up being twisted. Okay, you don't want that. See, it's nice. I think this ring band is gorgeous. And we need another fire polish. And the Gem Duo. Pick up another fire polish. This ring is super quick and super easy to make. So what you can do if you're just, you know, you want to make the whole set and you got all the supplies is just sit one night and make all 18 components or 17 components, however you, many you need for your bracelet because that's where the the di where it will dif dif be different. So, you know, not everybody's wrist is a size 8, so you'll use less components or you may need to use more and you'd have to make more components than 19 or 18 because the bracelet takes six, the earrings take two, the ring takes one, and then the um, necklace takes nine. Okay, sorry, I just had a little interruption there. All right, now, so you're going to continue with going into the gem duo. Picking up a fire polish. I love these little fire polishes. We got a whole whack of colors in and pastel today, so lots. <coughs> All right, so we are at the very last bead. Now we're going to join our ring band. So this is the ring band. So you want to give it a nice tight pull and tighten everything up to the base of this side. Okay. Goodness, why is my camera always going lopsided now? <coughs> anyway, whoops, fell again. I really don't know, guys. This is being a real jerk to me. All right, it's not going to stay, but anyway. All right, so you're going to, whoopsies, that's not good. Now, you're just going to go over to the side here where your needle is, and you're going to put it one end through those three beads and make sure it's not twisted. This is vital that you make sure it doesn't get twisted guys or you're going to be crying. So now you're going to go through these three beads. Make sure the, the right three. And I found it just to do one bead at a time, not to try and go through all three of them at once. It's mere impossible. One more. Okay. Sorry. Did that go in? It sure did. Now, before you do anything else, you want to get this, or just, well, you know, you can reinforce it. But I would just simply tie this off and get it over with. So pull this nice and tight here. This is why I like to reinforce it. But anyway, pull it nice and tight. Make sure your ring is all nice uh, and tight. All your beads are nice and close together, like so. And give this a box knot, um, square knot, box knot, whatever. <coughs> um, not so it is right over left pulling this making sure you don't snag anything right over left and left over right give it a good watch you don't catch your beads good tight pull and one for good measure right over left. I'm just going to do it that way. All right. Now, before you cut your threads off, you want to carefully add some glue in there, okay? Don't add any glue to your thread 
um, in here, but I don't want to do it till I run this through because unfortunately I'm going to end up with glue on my needle and that's going to suck. So let's get to get rid of the tail. Let's get back into business here. All right, so you're going to go right back up through these beads all again. Tighten this part of your shank up. Wow, one bead. Come on, Rubes, you can do this. Give it a good tight pull. Through your beads here. I'm actually going to just hold this. So, whoops, I really done that well. Through these three here on the ring. Up through your beads. I'm just going to reinforce because I'm just going through all of this, trying so hard not to snag any other thread in the process of doing this. Okay. And one more time. Pulling it nice and snuggy tight. Okay, come on, why are you giving me a, such a hard time? Jim Duel, maybe, because I pulled it so tight now. Anyway, that bead is just being nasty to me. Okay. Through there. Back up here, guys. Up here, oh, see, snag. I snagged them both. All right, we are done. <coughs> so, in order for me to tie off, I ain't gonna go try to go through all those gem duels. I'm just gonna go around the top here and tie off. It really doesn't make any matter. So, make sure you go up through the proper beads on the side there if you're going to tie off on top. Okay. One, two, through those three. Pull this knot in. I'm going to go through here again. I'm going to tie a double Knot again. Give it a good tight pull. Go through these beads here on the top. <clears throat> and I'm going to tie one more. Just because I think it's three knots to me, I always tie three knots in all my jewelry that I make, all my pieces. And I'm going to just run through some beads, go through some more. They're very, these holes are very big, so going through this so many times is very forgiving. All right, so let's trim the needle off. Leave a little bit of a, of a tail so you can make a ball. And I'm going to do the same here for this tail because I'm going to burn it. Hopefully I have a lighter in here. I don't know what happened to the one I had. So I'm, I'm leaving here. Let me see if I have a lighter in here. I know I had a bunch. I don't know where they all disappeared. I'll be right back. Okay, so I am going to burn that ball into a ball and I'm just going to push it in there. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on top, except it's just a little ball, and push it inside. Can't even see them. 
Now I'm going to use some super new glue to dab on my knot here before I actually tie it. You going to come out? There we go. So it's good and glued. And so is my finger. All right. I'm just going to let that dry a little wee bit. So now I have a pink one, a little big, and I have a green one, which is still big. <laughs> anyway, sorry about the pink, guys. That's the uh, dye from my ink pads. That's it, guys. That's the, that's the ring. Now you can trim this off nice and close. You don't need any tail on your... your uh, ring base. So there is two rings that I can interchange with my clothing. Are these not stunning? All right. Well, that's my tutorial for today. So next week I'll be back with the bracelet or necklace making. I will have nine components made and I will have eight of them assembled already joined together. Okay, the ninth one we will join on video. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do finish the ends. I have beautiful chain that I that I have in stock that I'll be using on the end of my necklace and finishing this completely right off. Completely next week, this whole set will be done. And like I said, you can make yourself a bunch of these gorgeous rings. Or another pair of earrings, but you'll have odd colors. That's why I say with your leftover Rivolis, make yourself some, some rings. That's it so far, guys. Looking good. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial, and I guess I'll see you guys next week. Bye, everyone. Have a great week.